All right, everyone. Hello, my name is Chris Delato. This is my capstone project for the Galvanized Data Science Immersive, and I worked on flow forecasting, forecasting river flows using machine learning. So for my project, I focused on the Blue River near Breckenridge, Colorado, and I built two different types of models, a Facebook profit model and multiple versions of a recurrent neural network long short term memory model. You can see the technical stack used in the project here and the model training was done with GPUs on Google Colab. So a little bit of info about the project data set. The, there's 30 years of historical data from two different sensors, the Hoosier Pass Snowtel sensor, which provided us average temperature, accumulated precipitation, and snowpack density, and the Blue River Streamflow sensor, which provides the historical streamflow rate in cubic feet per second. On the left here, you can see an example of what a Snowtel sensor site looks like. And on the right, you can see an example of a USGS streamflow sensor. So an explanation of the multivariate model. This project has four different input variables going into the model. So not only does it give the data, the model more data to predict on, but it also allows the model to understand how much time lag should be applied to each of those inputs to make the best possible prediction for the future. So in the example here, this is the value that we're trying to predict, a future stream flow value. And the model is able to learn which values with which time lag are going to help it make the best predictions. So a quick orientation of where these sensors are located. You can see the Hoosier Pass Snowtel sensor high up in the hills near Quandary Peak. The blue arrows here indicate the snowmelt flow direction as the snow melts out of the hills and drains into the valley. And the river sensor that we were using as our uh, forecast variable is above the town of Breckenridge uh, at the headwaters of the Blue River. So what's currently available from the USGS is just a historical average. This screenshot here is what you would see if you went to check the stream gauge on the website. And the historical average is the gray line. As you can see, it's okay, but it doesn't fit the actual observations very well. So our goal is to improve upon that. A quick note, time series forecasting is super challenging. There's an infinite number of variables that can influence things like the amount of water flowing through a stream. Our model only is able to take into account four. Even if you were to add more variables, it's still not going to come close to factors that influence real world situations. Additionally, with time series data, there's all kinds of problems like dealing with leap years, I included here a picture of myself in the middle of a grueling hike in the Colorado mountains. And uh, I felt like it was appropriate because sometimes dealing with time series data can be a bit of a slog. So a quick overview of the types of models tested. A Facebook profit model was tested. That's a general additive model. And then also a long short-term memory model. And this uses uh, a gate system to control how information is gonna flow through the model. 30 different versions of this LSTM model were tested and uh, we'll see the top four performers in the next graph. So here we can see all of our different models compared to the historical average, which is our baseline. The Facebook profit model did outperform the baseline. However, all versions of the LSTM model shown here outperformed the Facebook profit model. And our 10th variant that I tested, uh, which we're gonna call LSTM here moving forward, performed the best. Here's a quick look at the model architecture. We won't go too deep uh, in the information here, but basically it's a Keras sequential model that allows data scientists to build the model with layers of their choosing and define their own parameters. And here's a view of our LSTM model in action, predicting river flows for two different years, 2019 and 2020. You can see here that the model performance is gonna vary from year to year. I chose to highlight a 14 day forecast here because I felt like that was a time window where users could actually make use of the information provided to them. Forecasting only one day in advance may not be super useful. So 14 days uh, is a good amount of time if you're planning a project or planning a trip. And uh, this model was tested in the project in a range of one day out forecast all the way to a 30 day out forecast. So overall, when we compare the LSTM model to the baseline, at the 14-day prediction window, it performed 52% better than the historical average baseline model. 
So the whole point of this is that we want to provide data for better decision making. There's a number of people that are going to interact with a river. For the Blue River, for example, you've got people in the Denver area getting some of their drinking water, um, water managers in the Colorado water system, construction managers, and of course, recreational users like this guy pictured here, who really needs to have good decision, uh, good data about what's going on in the river. How could we extend this project in the future? Um, this framework could be used and adapted to any pair of snow tell and river flow sensors. You could also add additional data points like stream gauges from tributary rivers. And overall, a time series forecasting model like this could be adapted to forecast any value in any system, given that there's enough historical data available to train the model. And to wrap it up, here's a really great picture shot from the top of Quandary Peak. And you can see this whole process in action, the snow melting off Quandary Peak, feeding into the headwaters of the valley below. So my pre-trained models can be downloaded from my GitHub along with the full repo and code for this project. My contact information is provided here. Thank you very much for listening.